Hello there guys, James here. This is my user experience of POCO OS Ignition 5 version 2 for the POCO F1. This is my quick user experience from using this ROM for a couple of days. Now at this point this ROM isn't really even fully settled in so my user experience may differ from yours. While setting up this ROM I had safety net issues initially where banking apps did not work. So I installed Magisk, enabled Magisk hide and installed the safety net fix module and then it worked. So ultimately safety net issues were solved and I was able to use banking apps. This ROM comes with no gravity kernel version 4 by default. I would say it's not a very aggressive kernel, it does not allow too much heating and uh, balance but I think slightly leaning towards the performance side of things. Using this ROM the UI felt smooth, uh, sometimes I did feel more stutters, I think it is related to MIUI needing more time to settle than AOSP ROMs. If I give it enough time it will iron out. Coming to the ROM itself, I really like the fact that the launcher gives you an option to increase the animation speeds which I have not seen in previous ROMs. You also have Google Photos Unlimited Backup turned on by default. I just had to install the Google Photos app and open it. And then there's the OEM features that I really like. Coming from an AOSP ROM, I really did miss the MIUI style game mode, the video toolbar, the different UI. The whole experience feels like a breath of fresh air because almost all AOSP ROMs look similar and have a similar set of feature set. The next thing coming back from an AOSP ROM is the face unlock. Even though custom ROMs are giving the option of having face unlock, it is nowhere near as fast as in MIUI, the stock ROM. It is so smooth and so quick, you don't even really notice the face unlock working. You just uh, pick up the phone and it's already there unlocked waiting for you to use. That's a refreshing change. Coming to the performance, the uh, app launch speeds are normal but I would say the gaming performance is slightly better than average compared to other custom ROMs that I have been using recently. It does allow a little more heating but uh, I would say the performance is much more consistent. And something else that I notice is that the speakers in this ROM sound better than compared to other custom ROMs. I don't know what it is, even the headphones sound a little bit better in this ROM. Talking about battery life, battery life has not been the best for me. But like I said, I haven't given this ROM enough time to settle. As of recording this video, I've gotten screen on time of about 5, 5.5 five hours on casual usage. Uh, if I game, it will go down more. So those were the things that I like about this ROM. Coming to the things that I'm not a fan of. This is an Android 12 based ROM. So one thing that I miss from Android 13 is that the uh, default notification permissions. Whenever you open an app in Android 13, you can disable the app notifications right away which this ROM does not have. Coming back from an Android 13 ROM, it feels a little bit more highlighted in this ROM, this problem very specifically because notification handling is already a little bit worse in MIUI compared to ASP ROMs. Another thing is the double tap. Uh, it worked when I turned the feature on initially but subsequently it stopped working and uh, I tried restarting the phone. It still does not work. The last thing is that it's connected to the first point that I said, notification handling in MIUI is still not as good as stock Android. It has always been a problem in MIUI, I think they try to do notifications differently but the fact remains that Android is recognized for being good in handling notifications compared to other operating systems. So messing with that in itself is a really sensitive thing. In stock Android you can minimize notifications where the notifications will remain in the notification panel it, but it just won't show the uh, icon. It only shows when you open the notification panel which is missing in MIUI. So if, we, if I have a persistent indicator like app of my smartwatch, it just constantly shows notifications but I do not need that icon to be shown here because I already know the, that the app is running in the background. So yeah, that was the thing that I really did not like about MIUI but it's more of an MIUI thing than this custom wrong thing. Overall, I really like the fact that uh, MIUI is coming with Android 12 now. Official support ended in Android 10 itself but for the fact that we are getting Android 12 with MIUI it's a really refreshing thing to know that developers are still putting effort into this and one more thing is that the this ROM has been very stable for me it did not cause any you know it did not stop me from doing anything I did not have any stability issues or app crashes or anything like that and it worked like how a stock ROM should work Maybe if I give it enough time, the battery life and the uh, little bit of animation lags will also iron out. But yeah, overall it has been a very good experience for me and it has been a refreshing experience for me. I have told this word many times but coming back from Android 13, it really did feel so. Yeah, you should also try out this ROM if you have been 
trying Android, uh, you know, AOSP based Android ROMs for a long time. This ROM may not feel as good initially as, uh, you know, when you set it right up, it may be a little laggy, it may get a little hot. Uh, the animations may not be the smoothest, but eventually if you just let it take its time to settle in, I think it will be a very good ROM to use. So that has been it for my usage experience of this ROM. If you have any questions or queries, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and see you guys in the next one.